Hi, it's Mr. Polachek, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how we use fruit flies and genetic crosses to determine if traits are found on the same chromosome or not, and if they are found on the same chromosome, how far apart are they? Eventually, this will tell us um, how these uh, traits are arranged on a chromosome, and we can start uh, mapping them out. And that's going to be a separate screencast, and I'll talk about that at the end. Okay, so here you can see we've got some fruit flies all around and one magnified and you can see some traits. Uh, you can see uh, the red eyes, you can see the yellow body, you can see the normal wing structure. Okay, And what we're going to do is look at some of these traits and cross it with a recessive to see frequencies of how often they show up in the offspring. So let's go ahead and take a look at what you might see on an AP exam. Okay, here's a, a typical question where uh, we're going to cross a recessive, pure recessive, with a heterozygous. And what I want to do is just take some time and talk to you about the notations that we use. Thomas Hunt Morgan, uh, in studying fruit flies, changed the notation that Gregor Mendel used. And instead, he uses abbreviations for the alleles uh, of the recessive trait, not the dominant trait that uh, Gregor Mendel did. So let's take a look. You've got the... Uh, black-bodied fruit fly. That's the most obvious trait that we see. So let's talk about that. So black is recessive. So that's why you would see uh, on the black fruit fly, we have BLBL. BL. That's the letters for the recessive trait. And the other thing that you see is VGVG, VG, and that is for a vestigial wing. And you can see that the wings of the black fruit fly look very different from the yellow. Uh, and that's because they're vestigial wings and uh, they're kind of shrunken up and that fruit fly is not going to do what flies are supposed to do, which is fly. And that is a pure recessive fruit fly. And that's the notations that we use. VG for vestigial and BL for black. Now, when we look at the um, heterozygous condition, we see a yellow body for this fruit fly and we see the normal wing structure. And how do we represent that dominant trait? Well, with Tom, what Thomas Hunt Morgan did is instead of saying a dominant trait, he used the term wild type. And to represent that the trait was a wild type or dominant trait, he puts a plus next to it. And because this is heterozygous, we see VG plus VG. That means it has normal wings, which you do see. And it has BL plus BL, which means it has that yellow body. Now, when we go and try to figure out how far away these traits are, or if they are on the same chromosome, we have to look at the data. And the data table that they'll give you in this cross uh, is really important because it's going to tell you, there's going to be some signs that tell you that these uh, traits are found on the same chromosome. And the thing that you want to look for is uh, the parental types, which you will see right here. This is a parental type. Okay. And how do I know? Because I have yellow bodied with normal wings. And nor a yellow body with normal wings is this parent right here. So out of all the offspring, we have 721 that look exactly like that first parent. Well, if we go down to the next uh, row, we can see black bodied with vestigial wings. And this one here is also a parental type because it looks just like that. So these are your parental um, crosses. Like those are the ones that represent the offspring that look exactly like either one of the parents. The clue is down on the bottom of this data table. These are your recombinants. You have a yellow bodied with vestigial wings. So this one here we'll call a recombinant because it's showing a, a trait from each parent. And the same thing is true down here with a black body and normal wings. So we're going to call that one a recombinant trait. So what do we do with this information? How do we figure some things out? Uh, what you want to do to start is the first thing you want to do is add all these things up. Okay. And when you do, you are going to get a total of 1,566, 1,566 total flies. And then we want to focus our attention right here. How many are the recombinants? So 49 and 45 is going to give you 94. And then all we're going to do is divide those numbers. 94 divided by 1,566. When you do that, you will get a number like 
0.06, and that is equivalent to 6%. That means if we look at a chromosome, let's see if I can draw this chromosome here. Yeah, that looks okay. That means that these two traits, I put one here and one here, that they are six map units away. Okay, and that's how you figure out um, whether or not the traits are on the same chromosome and how far away they might be. So why don't you try a practice problem? Here's Here's a practice problem, and you can pause the video right now, and then I'll go over it. Okay, good luck. All right, so how do we solve this? Uh, first thing, like I said, you want to do is recognize where are the parentals and where are the recombinants. And again, the first two high number here uh, look exactly like one of the two parents. And then we have some recombinants down here. These are the ones to pay attention to because they have a trait from each parent. We want to add up all of the fruit flies here. When we do, we get 1,076 as our total. And our recombinants, there are 59. All you have to do now is um, do that simple division with your calculators. That's 59 divided by 1,076. That's going to give you 0 0.055. We'll just round it off there. And uh, that's going to give you 5.5%, which means if I draw a chromosome, these two traits are going to be 5.5 map units away from one another. Okay, so that's how you do it. I hope you got it right. But if not, don't worry. You could try one more. This is our last practice problem. Practice problem number two. You can go ahead and pause the video, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so... Again, we recognize our parental types. We see our recombinants. We're going to add these all together. When we do, we get 635. And when we add our recombinants, we're going to get 27. So just do 27 divided by 635. That's going to give you 0 0.04, which is 4%. And that means if we draw a chromosome here, that those two traits on here on the chromosome are four map units away from one another. Okay, I hope that helped uh, figuring out uh, whether or not traits are on the same chromosome. If you look at the next screencast, I'm going to go and show you um, how to sequence them so that you can find out uh, where all of these traits are on a chromosome. It's called mapping genes, and I hope that helped. I'll see you next time.